Hello everyone, welcome to the series by Census Networks by Maxcotech. This is the fourth part of the series in which we are going to look at data routing. We will first cover the definition which includes uh, what is the goal of wireless census networks and what is the solution and how does it works in a nutshell. Then we are going to look at the most popular example of data routing which is finding the shortest path using the JSCRA algorithm. And then moving on we will be looking at uh, in-depth example of how this finding shortest path works in real world scenarios. So let's get started. So data routing is defined as a process of transferring data packets from a node to any other node in a network, where the goal is to use such routing techniques that allows nodes to use minimum power during the data transferring. To achieve this, every node maintains a routing table, which tells that the message M coming from node I and destined for node J should be forwarded to neighbor node K. In order to use minimum power, we need to find the shortest path. For that, we will use the JSCRA algorithm again. In the last section, we got ourselves familiar with how this algorithm works for simple graphs, but now we are going to implement the same for digraphs. We have already studied about the trees and spanning trees, so the definition for this algorithm will be as follows. Message from any node V to destination node U, also known as sync node or the root node, should follow a path along a spanning tree routed at the sync node. So this will allow us to construct a spanning tree from all the nodes towards the sync node. That will eventually gonna make a sync tree. If a neighbor N of the node U knows about a path to another node W, then U discovers a path to W via node N, which can be simply illustrated in this way. Node N knows about W and it informs it to the node U. And eventually we will gonna let nodes tell their neighbors on the shortest path on the other nodes discovered so far. I'll put in the same example graph as we studied in our last section. Routing table is shown in the right for all other nodes directing towards V0. I have constructed the shortest path on the bold black arrowed lines in the same way as we did in the section 2 last video. These all entries in the table on the right are showing the shortest routes from the given node to the V0 node, which is our sync node. For example, if a message M destined for V0 arrives at V2, then V2 is going to look up on its table and route this message to its neighbor node V0, which in this case is our destination node. If the same message arrived at V1 instead of V2, V1 routing table will tell that forward this message to V3. And moving on, when it reaches to V3, it will gonna forward this message to its neighbor, which, which again is our destination node V0. And finally, M reaches its destination with the shortest path. So this table is constructed for only the sync node V0. In the same way, every node will gonna have entries in their routing table for every other sync node. As an example, look at the V2 node table. It stores the information of all the possible sync nodes and, and also tells us that which neighbor node we want to forward this packet and what would be the total weight of the path from this node to the destination node. If you look at the node 2 routing table V6, let's say a packet is coming to V2, which is destined for V6, then V2 knows that I need to forward this packet to V1 here. The total weight of this whole route will gonna be 13. So two plus seven plus four makes 13. In the same way, all of the other nodes construct their routing table. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like it, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you are new to this channel. This is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future. And stay tuned because the next video will be about data collection in which we will cover how floating logarithm works. So till then, I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.